the title of this uh, research project is in Spanish because that's how we presented this. We, we proposed this uh, almost two years ago to Dirección de Investigación y Postgrados, and they approved this project uh, in January last in January last year. And <clears throat> oh, it's a third semester about. And uh, we began our project last year, and we had some presentations in some national and international congresses here in Mexico. And then this year in January, uh, for the statistical analysis, we talked to Dr. Silvia. She works at the Departamento de Estadística in this university. And she helped us with this statistical analysis. So she's been working with us since January this year. And we're very thankful to this uh, doctor. She's not gonna be with us because uh, she already uh, helped us in the presentation with teachers and the presentation with uh, seven semester students and is busy doing other things so she can be with us today right so the name of this research is errores syntácticos y semánticos en la escritura académica de aprendices de habla hispana we wanted to change that because the the title of this uh, or the name of this research changed uh, after we read the literature and after we had some meetings with other doctors that are ex experts in this area. So we wanted to change that, but we couldn't. We, we actually asked uh, the Dirección General de Investigación y Postgrados if we could do that, and they said no. That's the name that we registered at the beginning, and that, that name had, had to stay. So that's why we have this name. All right, next slide, please. So we have established four objectives for this for this two-year study and we have fulfilled the three first objectives and we're doing this uh, round rounds of presentations to teachers and you guys who are doing advice semesters and, and this is the last objective of this study which is present results in meetings or in workshops uh, the idea was to do it in, 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 uh, in to invite all the students and all the teachers and have all of you in one place at the university. But since this uh, pandemic began, then we have to uh, do some adjustments and we're doing it by groups. And it's you guys today and next week uh, we have one more presentation with uh, the students in propedeutico and basically we finish with this objective. All right, next slide. Yeah, one of the main objectives or the reasons for doing this study was since writing is the most difficult um, skill, we wanted to get information from some of the students studying in our BA so that we could also inform all the teachers in the BA so that we could work together in the academy to work closely to help students along with the types of errors that they wanted. We wanted to learn how our particular group of students and RBA, uh, what kind of errors that they committed and compared that to the literature, compared that to how other uh, English language learners are committing uh, writing errors. Um, so that's another, I think, important aspect of um, really the purpose of doing our research. If we look at um, our research and the objectives, we can really divide it up into two areas, one being the writing development and the second being the types of errors. So considering the writing development aspect, we wanted to look at not only accuracy, which includes the errors below, but also complexity and fluency. And we'll talk more about those aspects. but. We wanted to talk about these three so that we had a better context as to what kind of challenges English language learners were facing in their writing development. 
The types of errors relate very much to accuracy, and we focused specifically on syntactic, morphological, and lexical errors. So if we look at some of the uh, other studies, if we look at the literature to see how other researchers investigated different types of writing errors, we see that a lot of research exists in comparing syntactic errors with semantic errors. And we initially started thinking in terms of syntax and semantics when we looked at different errors. As we got into the literature, though, and we got into our own research a little bit more, we started also talking to other colleagues to get more information about uh, the different ways of evaluating writing development. We ultimately decided on dividing up the types of errors into syntax, morphology, and lexicon. So for the purposes of our uh, research, we're not making a distinction between error and mistake. Um, we're basically looking at error as being uh, the use of a linguistic item in a way which a fluent or native speaker of the language regards as showing faulty or incomplete learning. So we're basically looking at non-standard language, non-standard language as being an error. So if we look at each of the types of classifications in terms of errors, the first being syntax. Syntax errors are related to word order. They're related to errors resulting from the absence of some constituents. For example, a missing word would be an example of a syntactical error. Also, a sentence fragment where maybe you're missing a subject or a verb within a clause. Um, also, looking at sentence combining, so any mistakes with regard to run-on sentences or a comma splice would also be under the category of syntactic errors. We have morphological errors. Morphological errors relate to, uh, they're actually different categories. Some are related to um, the nominal morphology, so that refers to uh, plurals, number, agreement, uncountable noun errors, and compounds. We also have verb uh, morphology, which relates to tenses, uh, errors in subject, verb agreement, and also errors in passive formation. Finally, we also have errors that relate to determiners and articles. This would also uh, be related to morphological errors, as well as errors in prepositions. Finally, we have lexical errors. Lexical errors basically are divided into two general areas, one being lexical idiomatic or word choice and vocabulary errors being the second related to word form. So word choice, the difference between these two tip mainly is that word choice um, is related to maybe a word being used that's awkward but doesn't interfere with the meaning. Uh, the wrong word, word form, um, relates to um, errors in word usage where maybe the meaning of the text uh, is not clear. So that's really the, the difference between these two types of uh, lexical errors. Now we have accuracy. Accuracy is the ability to be free of errors while using language to communicate. All right. So generally speaking, uh, accuracy relates to those types of errors that we just mentioned. Syntax, morphology, and lexical errors all relate to accuracy. But we also wanted to expand on just focusing on accuracy because sometimes uh, a lot of the research that you'll come across, if you're researching this yourselves, that you'll find that a lot of research only focuses on accuracy. And sometimes as teachers, we're just focusing on accuracy, but we focus less on complexity. And we also uh, focus less on fluency. So complexity is the development of a grammatical complexity is progressively more elaborate language of a greater variety of syntax pat patterning. Now, what does this mean? 
This relates a lot to the ways in which clauses are used in a text. Main clauses, dependent clauses, subordinating clauses, right? relative clauses, noun clauses. The way in which we use clauses in a text determines how complex the text is. Fluency is straightforward, simply how many words are used or structural units are used within a, a particular uh, unit, right? Maybe it's a sentence. Um, for our purposes, we're going to be using what's called a T unit. All right, so, so for us, our unit of analysis is a T unit. So a T unit, first of all, we look at a clause as being independent or dependent, all right? A clause is going to be a group of words with a subject and a verb, and we, uh, we can break those down between independent and dependent clauses. The dependent clauses can also be further broken down into relative clauses, subordinating clauses, and noun clauses. Now, to understand a T unit, we need to understand these clauses. So a T unit is, is defined as having one main clause plus any dependent or subordinating clauses that are within the sentence. So for example, if we have a simple sentence, one main clause, that's going to count as being one T unit. A compound sentence, one that has two main clauses will count as two T units. A complex sentence, one main clause and some dependent clause within the same sentence, that's going to count as one T unit. In a compound complex sentence, one that has three clauses, two main clauses and one dependent, that's going to count as two T units. So a T, a T unit is the unit of measure that we're going to use to measure complexity. So if a sentence has two T units, it's more complex than a sentence with one T unit. That's basically how what this means. And this T unit has been around for a long time, uh, since the 60s, and it's still used today in current literature as a way to measure complexity. <coughs> Okay, now we're going to <clears throat> present to you the uh, research design, basically. And a research question is, what are the salient syntactic, morphological, and lexical errors encountered by second semester students of a BA in ELT in composition writing? So we act, we, we, we asked uh, second semester students in this VA to participate in this study last year. And we had, <clears throat> we had at the beginning like 37 or 36 students. Next slide, please. So only 31 uh, participants, 31 learners completed the, the activities that we asked them to complete. Uh, from these 31 learners, uh, we had 12 males and 19 females. And at this level, in this semester, according to the curricula, to the plan de studios, uh, they're supposed to be at B1, B2 uh, English level, according to the European framework of reference. And the age, we have we had a mean of 20.75. Obviously, this has changed right now with a range of 19 to 25 years the uh, participants who uh, participated the students who participated signed an informed consent form also so uh, we got their permission for them to not only participate in our in the study but also they gave us permission to share the results of the study I always forget to say that. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Stewart. You're welcome. And the, the method in, about the instruments and procedures, we basically asked our learners to, to in, one, in one of their classes, to write an essay 
uh, they had the 50 minutes of the class to write the essay. That was a very, uh, we didn't specify whether it was an, an argumentative essay or a descriptive essay or a comparable contrast. We just asked them to write about the topic friendship. For that, we showed them a, a, a picture. And on this picture, they could see, uh, I believe, two friends hugging each other. And based on that, uh, they wrote about friendship. That's, that was the only instruction that we gave and that they had the 50 minutes to do so. And as they were writing, obviously, we were there supervising the writing. And in case they had any questions about uh, some words, some vocabulary, of course, we helped them with that. But we didn't help them with grammar. Just, uh, we just let them to write. Uh, freely, basically, right. So we also we also later later on we administer a, an online questionnaire to get some demographic information and to get to get also some linguistic profiles, right. Next slide, please. The uh, the online questionnaire here. I think it's important to mention that this is a quantitative study. So the online questionnaire was basically closed types of questions and information, um, as it's mentioned here, demographic information, but it relates a lot to the histories of, or the exposure that students had with English. We wanted to see if there were any uh, tendencies between these linguistic profiles and their errors. In the data analysis, basically what we did was to analyze each single essay uh, regarding accuracy, complexity, and fluency, because basically we, we focus on that. That's why I said at the beginning that the name of this project changed. Uh, first, we thought about semantic semantic errors. And what was, what was the other one? Syntactic errors. Syntactic and semantic errors, but that changed to morphological, lexical, and syntactic based on these three dimensions. I think at the beginning we had the idea of just accuracy, and as we were presenting some preliminary results in some congresses, particularly in, at the Autonoma, at the Universidad Autónoma de Huascalientes, uh, every year in May. Well, that, that used to happen in May, now it happens in July. Uh, there is a national congress where uh, there are participants from there are participants from uh, not only this country but from other Latin countries, and we had very good observations in in at the end of of of, of those presentations, and that's how we decided to extend our topic to complexity and fluency as well. Uh, errors that pertain to punctuation or spelling, we didn't consider that with the exception of comma splices and run-on sentences. So here we have a list of the types of errors that uh, came up. Most of the errors were predetermined, predetermined in the sense that um, based on the literature, we already had a group of types of errors that we were looking for. Uh, we also were um, looking at types of errors that we've seen as teachers uh, based on our experience teaching the different writing classes. Um, and so this list here is primarily, primarily a list of predetermined errors that came up. So we have noun um, and word form, so any this is the description for each one. A word form is incorrect, pronoun, uh, maybe the incorrect usage of a, of a pronoun, and so on. All right, about this, another thing about this table, if you go back, to, thank you, is uh, here we just wrote type of error as the main heading for the first column and description for the second column as the, main, as the second heading. Uh, in when you do research and you present uh, and you and you want to present this in an article in a journal article, 
the most appropriate term for the second column is not description is basically the how you're going to op op operationalize your your concepts your 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 types of errors so this is basically the operationalization of of these uh, errors right and we came up with all of this taken from obviously the literature of course now this list you'll notice is a little bit different uh, especially if you look at here in the middle of the table on the left hand side where it says wf and you notice this is this stands for word form and you'll notice we have several variations of word form errors okay so we have the code in one column then the type of error so uh, we have from the top agree means subject verb agreement vt verb tense verb form and then word form or word formation we have variations superlative comparative noun adverb and so on now, here in this case, this is an example of a code that we that came up while we were doing the research. So the prior list, these were predetermined codes that came from the literature. But here we did have some codes that emerged through the process of data collection. As we were collecting information and we were analyzing, we felt that it would be useful to at least subdivide these these types of uh, errors so that's what we did here you'll notice next to the type of error we also have the identification of error the error um, this actually came from our data collection these are examples of mistakes that students uh, wrote or committed uh, in our research and then the final column is the corrected version all right, so here you see from agreement all the way down to errors of pronoun and preposition, articles, um, and uh, this gives you kind of an idea of the code that we used, the type of error, the an example, and the correction, what it, uh, how it should, how it could be corrected, and these are all examples of morphological errors. All of these codes fall under this category of morphology. Similarly, we have uh, the same table now for syntax errors and lexical errors. Again, the code, we have the type of error, examples that came from our literature, and how we would correct it. And again, most of these codes are predetermined. <laughs> Here what you see now, this is kind of blurry, it's not very clear, but this is just an example of one, uh, one essay, one, this is one essay example, this is not complete, this is a, a two-page two essay, some, some participants, they wrote two or three pages, that was uh, surprising, some participants, very few participants wrote just half of a page, Right, most of them wrote one page uh, because we asked them to write uh, by hand, and and this is what they did. Right, they just created their their own story. So we look at each essay, and and this is what we did regarding each dimension uh, that we consider in this study. Each dimension for the dimension of accuracy the dimension for complexity and for fluency. In the following slide, you're gonna see an example of what we did with this. We actually, we spend a lot of time analyzing each essay first. Uh, as you can see there on, on the left-hand side margin, uh, we just wrote the, the number of lines so we could identify which line we were working on that was from from every five lines, we put a number. Line one was one, line five, line five, five, and so on. And then from there, we start, we did the analysis for for accuracy. Here is very difficult to see uh, 
to, dif to differentiate the accuracy analysis from the complexity analysis from the fluency analysis. So we wanted to show you this so, so you can see what we actually did with, with every single essay. Obviously, some, in some essays we detected, we identify more accuracy errors and complexity errors than in other essays, of course. So we selected one which has several mistakes, right? Which, which has uh, enough mistakes, so you could see that there are different uh, there are different types of accuracy and complexity errors. Now, in the following slide, you can clearly see an uh, uh, an example of uh, uh, the accuracy analysis. And here, what we did was to underline every error that we identified and then write on top of it the code that we use for the type of error that we consider that uh, we had identified. For example, in the first line, support help, that's, we consider that that's uh, uh, an agreement error, which means it's either a subject verb agreement or a pronoun noun agreement or this type of agreement errors. Another example of this is in in the second in the second line, the support the support uh, we identify this as a word form noun. So there's something wrong with this noun with the form of this noun, and then there should be a little line between the preposition to and the noun friend, which means that uh, there's a missing article there. So this this. This is a missing word error, and this is, specifically speaking, this is an article error, an article that this writer, this participant forgot to, to write there, and so on and so on, as you can see. Obviously, uh, you're gonna see later in, 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 some, in some graphs that we're going to show you the number of, the, the frequency, the, the frequency, the frequencies of errors that they committed for morphology, for vocabulary, and for syntax, right? In the following slide, you're gonna see, what you're gonna see is an example of how we started, how we set up with the analysis for complexity. In other words, for T units, identifying uh, every single T unit, T unit that they wrote. So these are indicated by the red brackets, right? Each pair of brackets means a T unit. That's what it means. And then in the following slide, uh, you're gonna see the, the clauses that they included in each T unit, right? And again, a T unit is it's an independent clause plus any subordinate clause. Uh, so for compounds, for a compound sentence, we basically have two T units because we have two independent clauses. For, for a complex sentence, we have one T unit because that's the combination of one independent clause and one subordinate clause. And for, for a compound complex sentence, then it depends uh, how many independent clauses uh, the learners wrote so that's the number of t units so here, here you can see in blue in blue parentheses the number of clauses uh, clauses and we're talking about independent clauses and dependent clauses in the following slide you can see the t unit and the clauses this is the analysis that we did we had to count the number of t units we the formula that we use was T units. Other, other researchers, they, they have used the, the close formula. They go by clauses and not by T units. All the researchers, they go by sentences, not by clauses. So it depends on the purpose that every researcher wants to pursue, and that's the formula that they use uh, for the complexity analysis. We decided from the beginning to use the T units. And uh, we also, when we, uh, when we analyzed the 31 essays, each one of us analyzed 
as as you're seeing in these examples, the the types of clauses, the types of errors. We each did it individually. Then we got together and compared notes and reached a consensus for any of those that uh, were different to make sure that we all agreed on on all of the uh, errors and also uh, the T units and clauses as you're as you're seeing here. All right, so here we have our results. And in total of the 31 essays, we found 901 errors. Here you have a list of frequency, the most frequent errors being at the top of the list to the least frequent at the bottom. You have how many errors, how many times these errors were committed, as well as the percentage. These are uh, the percentages of the total amount of errors uh, for, for these. And you'll notice there's initial next to each of the error types, L, M, and S, standing for syntax, morphology, and lexical errors. These are the categories that they fall under based on our study. Here we have now looking just at syntax errors, we, uh, we found that there, there were 222 syntactic errors in total, or 25% of the total errors were uh, of this type. You'll notice here we have uh, comma splice and missing word were the most common at 43% and 32% respect, respectfully. And we have sentence fragments, we have word order and run on sentences to a lesser degree. We also have morphological errors. We had a total of 399 of this type. 44% of the total errors were morphological errors. And here we have primarily word form and verb tense being uh, the most common. We also have articles, prepositions, and agreements. These are all errors of uh, morphology. And uh, this made up the biggest part of the type of error that was uh, committed. And then we have lexical errors, totaling 251 in total, or 28% of the total errors. And we just have two types. We have the word order type of error and the word choice. Again, the difference between these two, the word choice errors, these are um, to a lesser degree. They're awkward. Maybe they're words that aren't really used in uh, standard English but the meaning is still clear. Whereas wrong word, that, this is going to be a problem with understanding the meaning of what the writer is trying to transmit. Uh, this would be more serious than word choice. Now, regarding complexity, remember we're using T-unit. T-unit is our unit of analysis for figuring um, for figuring the uh, this ratio, this number. And we're missing a, some explanation here, but uh, the T units, basically accuracy in this number here is saying that of each T unit, there were 0.87 errors, okay? Less than one error on average for each T unit. Remember, T unit is a main clause with any dependent clauses attached to the main clause. Uh, complexity, here we have a 1.57, all right? And, and this is uh, essentially one and a half clauses, more or less, per T unit. And we have fluency of about almost 12 words, 11.85 total words per T unit, to give you more or less an idea how, how many words were in each, um, each uh, T unit. So that's going to conclude our presentation. I don't know if uh, there are any questions. If you have any questions, we can answer those at this time.
if your microphone is not working for some of you, you can use the chat option. Any questions, guys, about uh, any of the information that we're sharing with you in our study? No. No. No questions. Well, there are no questions, then we just want to thank you guys for joining this presentation. Uh, we want to thank also your your tutor, that's uh, teacher Juan Antonio, for telling you about this uh, session today and for sharing the link to this uh, Google Meet presentation. And in case later on you might have any questions, uh, feel free to send a message, an email to us. I'm going to write my email account here in case you might, you might have a question later on.